Alright, so uh, we're here in Nuke. Um, like most of my other tutorials have been in Fusion, uh, Nuke is of course different. I just wanted to get more familiar with, with Nuke because I always run into things where it, at every studio I get, uh, they use Nuke of course, and uh, I need to do slap comms and stuff like that occasionally. I just wanted to want to get a little bit better at Nuke. Um, since I decided to just pick up a Nuke Indie license and just start doing some personal projects in Nuke as well. Personally, I, I do really like the workflow here. It's, it's a little bit more intuitive than uh, than Fusion, to be honest. Uh, and it does work uh, with Aces from default. So everything, when you load in, it just works uh, by default with uh, Aces. You can see here, everything's just set up by default to work in uh, Aces color space. You can see here, if you are is already set to ASUS uh, and with some of the things you need to actually tell it how it should bring it in. So for example, here uh, I'm bringing it in as um, uh, color picking output Rec 709. So then that will bring it into uh, into ASUS. But um, yeah, let's just walk through this. Uh, this is going to be a less in-depth chapter, I guess, but just walk through it and you can see how this is all build up, but I don't, I don't want to make this a sort of a look at me. I know all about Nuke uh, chapter, because uh, like I, I don't like, I know the basics of Nuke. And uh, this was me learning Nuke, but I do I do think it's going to be interesting to just see how you bring a, uh, a, a a scene together with all these different renders, which is just similar to how I would do in Infusion, but now it's in a different program. So uh, yeah, we start here with the, uh, with these three thing. Just uh, color correcting a little bit and then using reduce noise, which is, uh, um, yeah, it's a, it's a plugin, uh, which we need video reduce noise. So it's a plugin. So if you download the file, you won't have, you won't have that, uh, or unless you have to have the plugin. Uh, I've used this also in a lot of my, uh, fusion tutorials. So, uh, yeah, you already might already be familiar with it. Then over here, I have, uh, just some clouds. I figured I once wanted something in the background. You have these reformat uh, nodes, which essentially just reformats something to, you can see put reformat, you reformat it to uh, whatever uh, format that you're that you're working on for your scene. And I set up my scene to, uh, to the root format is this. And so I, um, I rendered everything with overscan basically. So I had some, some extra, uh, well, extra place to work with. Um, and you might see like the, the final video on YouTube was actually 4K, but I actually uh, used Topaz uh, Video Enhance AI to to um, to upscale the final output of this thing. So this is an AI uh, AI enhancer. It gets really good results, uh, and I always wanted an excuse to buy it, and uh, so I did. And the main reason why I got it like le really last minute is uh, the day before I wanted to upload this. I like I already uploaded it to YouTube, and it's just the the 1080p well the 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 2K format I uploaded is the compression was just terrible. Um, and when I so I tried an upscale with the Topaz Labs, and then I uploaded it to YouTube, and then because uh, it's compressing the 4K and then then down uh, down compressing the um, the, uh, the, the, uh, 1080p layer actually turned like it looked better on YouTube after I first upscaled it to, uh, with AI upscaler to, uh, to 4k. So that's, uh, that was, uh, that was, that was quite interesting. Uh, anyway, color correcting a little bit and not that much interesting going on, but you can see I'm just merging it on top here. I'm not even transforming it because this is a background and it's out of focus and like it's uh, it's a sky. So even if the camera is moving forward. You see here that doesn't doesn't really matter. Um, oh yeah, I did have a great thing here, which I I was just trying out different looks. I can maybe show you some of the um, some of the process that I went through because there's quite a lot of uh, quite a lot of versions that I went through. Let me just grab a couple of those. Um, wall blaze render red gonna comp. All right, let's just go through a couple of these, a couple of these. Um, all right, here's one, uh, not great. Oh, wait. sometimes it just doesn't uh, load the sequence if you drag it in like that. So this was an, uh, this was an early one. 
you can see there wasn't any ground fire. This was not even the first one, by the way, because I did have uh, I did have earlier ones as well. Um, here's another one. So you can see I'm just trying to sort of to shape uh, shape the fire there. So here's one you can see the uh, sky is still very clear. I did bring in this um, this fire here. This is starting to get into the direction that I that I liked. Here's one, a little bit extra sort of stuff going on. As you can see, there's a fire change a little bit. There's some extra more interesting stuff going on there with the uh, with smoke. Here, uh, environment fog, which we discussed. Uh, the background thing, which I didn't like, and now you can probably see why. All right, experimented with that. Here, the background stuff is is gone, and you have the extra. You have some extra fire on it. And then here, with uh, some embers on it. So just building it up from there. Um, yeah, let's just continue walking through this whole thing. So. Over here, I have the, I have this stuff. This was denoised from Karma. I just, I tend to just turn it on, see what it, what the Nvidia denoiser looks like, and if it doesn't look good, I just denoise it in, um, in Nuke. Uh, I haven't been able to find a open Intel Intel open image denoiser for Nuke. Well, there is one for Fusion, so maybe there is one if if you know about a Intel denoiser for Nuke, that would be nice. Um, what what I ended up doing here is just. I used a neat video here to denoise it. Um, yeah, here's a different. I don't. Yeah, okay. So what I ended, I I forgot to mention that in the karma scene, I think. So I rendered this the the ground light here separately. Um, I'm just merging that on top here. A bunch of disabled grade nodes. <laughs> and then. Just plusing this on. So this is already before the fire in, so you can see where the fire is going to be. So building it up, building it up slowly but, sur but surely. Um, oh yeah, so my, this is exponential glow uh, thing. This is, all right, so you have a thing for new called Nukepedia. And there's a whole bunch of uh, free things you can, uh, you can find here, like exponential glow. So when you download these, these are not made for Nuke Indie. Um, how you solve that? So if you, when you download, because Nuke, 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 Indie, uh, Nuke Indie has a has its own format. What you can actually do, maybe let me just let me let me download something real quick. One second. So let's say I have this one. Let's say I download it. Download. I agree. There we go. And yeah, all right. So this is uh, all right. This is not e this or this is actually opening as a uh, regular nuke file. So I think I should be able to just drag it in. You can see if I drag it in, um, that will work. Uh, and then from here, you can actually save it out as a where is it? How did I do this again? You can actually save something out as a gizmo, export as gizmo, and you can export it. Um, Sometimes, so, uh, so uh, a gizmo is kind of like an HDA in 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 Houdini, essentially. Uh, sometimes these things already come in as gizmos, but they don't work in Nuke, Nuke Indie. What you do if it uh, comes in uh, like that, what you can actually do is you can open up the um, the the sort of the node, and you can see now I'm just opening the Nuke file. Again, you can open it up in the text editor. See, this is just a uh, as a text editor now. You can actually copy copy this and then paste it in Nuke as the text, and you can see I get it as well. And then from there you can paste it in. So you cannot uh, load in those uh, uh, those those gizmos by itself, but this that's a way to make them work. And if you want to keep them, you can just export it as a gizmo yourself, and then you have a nice little gizmo, and then you can type exponential glow, and then you have 
you have your thing there, right? So that's a thing that you need to keep in mind with Nuke Indie. But let's uh, let's continue walking through this uh, through this uh, very chaotic composite. So doing some exponential glow there. Uh, yeah, loading some of those. I I rendered those branches separately as well. So you can see there were already some here, but I had a separate vendor where I just merged those in separately. All right, there we go. Uh, yeah, some of the fog here, and you can see that really, really worked well here. Once you so it gets rid of the sort of a like it it really fill, fills it up. Looks like a sort of a nice foggy forest. Um, yeah, then here I have a just have a great note. And I'm just shuffling the depth here, and it's just merging a constant in here. So you get a, get a depth pass here, grading it down, and then using that as a mask input to in order to be able to grade down the background. You can see, you can just grade it down. So it's doing that based on luminance. And then using some depth of field here. So Frizz Loof depth of field, again, it's a paid plugin. Uh, you could also use ZD focus, but I uh, I use them a little bit here and there uh, sometimes. Like with the with the particle CD focus was actually working better. But I'm just used to fresh loop depth of field, so that's why I used it there. Um right. Then here I am merging, so let's branching off. Uh some fire. I think this one looks pretty nice. Looks pretty well. This is actually a um see it actually freezes after a while and this is actually a bug or bug from from me so i there's actually 50 more frames which in the in the final render is actually a still frame of the thing in there which i didn't notice until after i uploaded and already published the whole thing but uh but you have a bunch of uh, renders here you can see they look uh, they look pretty nice and i'm i'm grading them here and they don't necessarily and uh, putting them out of focus because, uh, of course, I couldn't use a depth pass, so I'm just blurring them separately. And they, like the contrast here, might look a little bit extreme, but uh, blurring them a little bit there, right? But once you sort of merge it in here, all right. Oh, what I in where am I merging them in? A little bit down here. Yeah. So I'm, when I'm merging them in here, actually. Looks quite okay. And of course, here's some uh, exponential glow. So this looks way too extreme here. Uh, but once you put it in here, it, uh, it works quite well. So we're just walking through it. So adding those additional, additional smoke layers here. Some additional smoke layers, very nice. All right, there we go. And just some grading. And then here I am um, retiming this thing. I'm slowing it down by 50% because I I wanted the sequence to be even slower and I was already doing renders. So instead of doing that again, I just decided to just slow down the entire thing here in um, in Nuke. And this is without the embers yet, as you can, uh, as you can see. The uh, reason being is that the slowing down these embers I can get rid of this because I didn't end up using that. But these uh, slowing down the embers because they're really like their particles that doesn't work. Like optical flow type stuff doesn't work with fire. Uh, it can reasonably compute these motion factors and like this slowing down works really well. But with the embers, it just wasn't working. So that's why I did I did the embers um, as a separate render two times as slow. And then I actually had a had a separate cam, like the cam slow, which is moving forward twice as slow. I'm just rendered that. And then because it's also, it's both twice as slow, it, uh, you could just uh, merge it on top and it would all work. Right, merging it in. And you can see when we have uh, some embers going on there. Then here's some more embers. So those are these embers here. There's some weird stuff going on with the depth of field, but I mean, it all it generally works. So, some issues, but <laughs> I mean, as long as it looks fine in the end, we're all happy, right? So, um, you know, running that out. Then 
Uh, I was pl playing around here with some colors. Oh, I didn't end up uh, doing this. So I wanted to add the text and I was experimenting with doing this in Nuke itself, but I ended up not doing, and I like, see, I already did some stuff with some fire and I didn't like it. I ended up adding the text in After Effects. So let's just jump into After Effects. Right, so we're in After Effects. Um, actually, there's a couple of things here. So I'm working half in uh, in Aces here. <laughs> it's, it's a little bit messy here, but uh, so I am, like I have the, where is it? Do, do, do. Oh yeah. So I'm actually doing some great on top of um, of Aces and this, uh, this blue color that I'm putting on top is actually not configured for Aces because if I enabled it, I just, I didn't like the color, how it was coming out. So it's a little bit messy here, but um, essentially what they just have here is, is the, I just have the text sort of fading in and I have, I have some extra dust particles here that I ended up, uh, this is just from uh, Action VFX, so it's, it's stock footage. So I uh, ended up just adding that on top, to added some, uh, so going from Nuke and doing some additional stuff here in After Effects, but and then here we're just building the sort of the uh, sort of a nice final final picture, doing a little bit of additional uh, color correction. You see, adding a little bit of extra contrast there. Oh yeah, that's the open color. I got some feedback of people thinking there's not enough contrast in general, but I I preferred it with like a little bit of blue and a little bit less contrast. But I guess that's that's personal. Um, I kind of like it like that, but I mean, uh, yeah, just leave, let me know in the comments what you think about it. Um, yeah, that's pretty much, pretty much everything. I mean, it's, yeah, of course, after that, you have the whole thing with the, uh, or adding the text, doing the breakdown, whatever, but that's, uh, that's just some additional stuff. But yeah, that's, that covers pretty much the sort of compositing chapter. And it's a little bit, uh, a little bit simpler than some of the other stuff, uh, but Again, I didn't want this to be sort of a new masterclass. It's just an overview of the uh, of the project. Again, you can download all of these files and look through it yourself and <laughs> try to sort through the chaos. I know they're not super cleaned up, but uh, hopefully with the video itself, it, it should give you a good idea to sort of um, how you can how you can put a project like this together. So that was uh, that was at least the intent with sort of this uh, this uh, this video series. I know with my courses, I'm generally a little bit more organized, but with these projects, I just want um, I just want to take time to make f fun personal projects. And then if I have to roll them into a course, literally it takes me six or eight weeks to make it into a course. This way I'm actually able to, to make educational material from uh, uh, a little bit quicker. And then we'll do the occasional course where we really dive in depth, but hopefully this was still, uh, still educational. So hope you liked it.